Welcome to the 244th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Ted Geltner, author of the book Blood, Bone, and Marrow, a biography of Harry Cruz. Stay tuned for the interview. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Ted Geltner, author of Blood, Bone, and Marrow, a biography of Harry Cruz. Ted, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Jeff. Well, if someone listening isn't familiar with who Harry Cruz is, can you spend just a few minutes talking about Harry and who he was? Sure. Uh, Well, Harry was um, a... uh, popular novelist. Uh, I started writing in um, the uh, late 60s. It was uh, actually when he first got published. Um, yeah, he was um, mostly known as a Southern Gothic novelist, but um, uh, also dabbled in journalism, um, uh, wrote for Playboy and Esquire, and um, also uh, um, a lot of other journalism, uh, you know, work, wrote for a lot of magazines throughout the seventies and also wrote a lot of screenplays and, um, really, uh, was well known for all of those things. Uh, but, but, but most well known as a novelist and, uh, also was, a, um, a professor, creative writing teacher, um, with, you know, hundreds of, uh, student disciples who kind of, um, uh, took his teachings and, and, uh, and used them and kind of, uh, you know, spread his, uh, name to the literary tree, you know, or created his own. So, uh, so that's kind of an introduction to him. Sure. I would say. Well, what led you to writing blood, bone and marrow? Um, well, uh, I got to know Harry, um, uh, towards the end of his life. Um, so he, he started writing in the sixties and, uh, really, uh, was had his kind of the height of his popularity. His popularity was like the seventies and the eighties. And, um, by the time I got to know him was like in kind of the early two thousands and Harry had always, uh, a lot of his books had been, um, optioned for movies and, but they had never, um, ever made it to the screen. So, uh, he, he finally had that happen for him at about 2004. And they, they uh, made a movie of a book called the Hawk is dying, which is one of his early novels. And at that time I was a newspaper reporter and, um, got the call to do the story and I, uh, write the story about the movie and got to interview Harry, uh, and, and write an article for the newspaper and then kind of kept on doing that. And, and, you know, Harry, you know, wrote another book and, you know, a lot of things happened to him that were newsworthy and, and I kept in touch with him and got to know him pretty well. And, um, years later, uh, I was out of the newspaper business, but I kept in touch with him and got the idea to, to write a biography of him. This was when, or when he was still alive and interviewed him, uh, you know, a few times, uh, toward the end of his life. And, um, after that, you know, I just, just, uh, continued with the project. And, um, the other thing was that he had, uh, during that, during those years, he had sold all of his papers to the university of Georgia. So I got to, um, do the research, you know, he'd kept all his letters and all of his papers and all that sort of thing. So, um, so that was kind of the genesis of the book. And then, um, you know, just, just researched it for, until uh, until I had had gathered enough information. <coughs> Sorry. Um. So, um, do you have a favorite cruise novel yourself? I do. Um. So you know, I've been talking to people about Harry Cruz for years now, and um, uh, the number one, by far, what people say is their favorite Harry Cruz book is a book called the childhood. And, and so Harry had written, um, he, he had written, you know, these, these, uh, string of novels, you know, after he finally it took him a long time before he broke through. And then he wrote like 10 novels, um, you know, all, you know, really highly acclaimed and, and, you know, uh, 
great books, but then he decided he was going to, he was going to write his biography or autobiography. And he wrote this book, a childhood, which is, uh, you know, about his, uh, he was, a, he grew up really poor on, on a, on a uh, sharecropper farm in, in Bacon County, Georgia, you know, during the depression. So that's what this book is about called the childhood. So anyway, that's, uh, um, really unanimous or not unanimous, but, but the high percentage of people say that's the, that's the best writing he ever did. It was kind of the peak of his career. So, but your question was what my favorite is. So I love that book too, but I, I would have to, you know, I've read them all now. Um, and he wrote 22 books, uh, I think we, um, in, in total, you know, including, uh, journalism and, and this, uh, um, memoir and then all of his novels. My favorite probably is a novel he wrote called a gypsy's curse. Um, which was like his fifth or sixth book. And, uh, the story behind that is if you don't mind that I <laughs> no, not at all extend this answer. Okay. Not so, uh, anyway, so just a little more about the life of Harry. So he had, um, his first three books had, um, uh, characters that, uh, that he would, uh, that he called midgets. That's not the term of art to, to use today, but, um, Nonetheless, they they were that was part of the book, and and he had he developed this reputation for writing about freaks, uh, you know. Again, his word or the word that were was used about him um, that there were these sort of characters, and that was kind of you know part of his uh, uh, his uh, outlook on his his own writing was that he wrote about these sort of characters because um, it was you know they had um, they had these these outward issues uh, that they couldn't hide. And, you know, Harry would say that, you know, all of us have these issues, but most of them are on the inside, but these sort of characters, you know, that they, they, the, you know, the world is, is staring at staring back at them. So they're looking at their, their own inadequacies. The world is a mirror to that anyway. So he wrote all these books with these sort of characters and then he was got the, this reputation and, you know, people were telling him, you can't do that anymore. You know, you're a one trick pony. You can't do that. And his response was this book, A Gypsy's Curse, or The Gypsy's Curse, which uh, the main character is a legless, deaf-mute hand dancer. <laughs> and uh, so basically it was Harry saying, you know, this is how I write and this is what I'm going to tell you about, you know, the, regardless of, of, you know, the, cr the criticism I get. And uh, so anyway, it's a great book and it's, it's, uh, it's about, it takes place in a boxing gym in Jacksonville, Florida and has, you know, great characters. And uh, it's the only book that he wrote in first person of all of his books, you know, it's told from the point of view of this character. So anyway, so that's my favorite of all of Harry's books at this point, you know, this kind of changes, but, but it's a great, a great novel that I recommend. Sure. So in your research for this biography of Cruz, was there anything that particularly surprised you about his life that you hadn't known before you started the research? Um, well, the, the, uh, I guess the, the, you know, there's surprises all the time, you know, um, the, 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 the part of it that I didn't have any idea about was, um, all this, the, what happened kind of in his life before he, um, ever was published, you know, he, he had this, um, uh, this long period where he was really just teaching himself how to be a writer. So, uh, you know, he was, like I said earlier, he grew up really poor. None of his family had ever even graduated from high school. And, um, but he, uh, you know, he got this, the, you know, whatever there was within him that was going to cause him to be a writer, you know, uh, he, he had that and it drove him to, you know, find books and read on his own. And, and, um, even though he wasn't a great student, he went to, to university of Florida and he, you know, got through there and he found his mentors. His, 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 his first mentor was a guy named Andrew Lytle, a great, um, uh, teacher of writing, also the teacher of Flannery O'Connor. And, you know, a guy who, um, was, you know, in those years, one of the, the most respected, uh, writers, uh, in the South. Anyway, so, through that, you know, th those sort of things are the things I really didn't know much about, you know, his, his, how he, um, how he developed and, you know, how, what got him to the stage that he was, you know, he, he, uh, um, he was a 
taught at a junior college in, in um, Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a couple of years and was a like a, a commu- an organizer, a faculty organizer. You know, I didn't know that about him. And, and uh, he, he lost a, a son. One of his, his kids drowned at an early age and really didn't know that story. So I guess it was the story of his of his early life before he became, you know, the, the, the Harry Cruz that, that um, everybody knew. Uh, those sort of things really were, were interesting to research and also, um, you know, surprising. And what, what was that apprenticeship period like for him? I mean, how did he, how did he, uh, become the writer that, that everyone knows as Harry Cruz? Well, the, 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 the kind of the greatest story that really tells, uh, you know, how hard he was working to teach himself to be a writer from that period of his life was um, his uh, his interest in and attachment to the work of Graham Greene. So Graham Greene was this you know great uh, English novelist of kind of, uh, kind of literary thrillers, uh, you know uh, spy related um, thrillers of the of that era. And uh, you know he was he was well respected writer, but also you know a, a, a sold a lot of books as well. So, so Harry decided, you know, I guess he, something about, about the writing of Graham Greene really, uh, touched something in Harry. So, um, he, he spent an entire year of his life, you know, during this period where he took apart the Graham Greene novel, uh, you know, piece by piece, he went through and, uh, he chose his, one of his favorite books, uh, called the end of the affair. And, charted how many characters were in it, how many, uh, cities, you know, how many different time periods, you know, how old the character were, characters were, and he, you know, wrote all this down and then kind of used all that data to create his own novel. So this was him really, you know, peeling away, uh, the layers uh, of a novel to, to, you know, see what the, uh, what was behind it. And, um, and, you know, figuring out how it is done. And he, you know, he said at the time he knew that it wasn't going to be worth anything, that you know, no one was going to read it or he could never have it published. It was just a, an exercise in teaching him how to write a novel. So he did that for a year and then he sent it to, to Andrew Lytle, his mentor, who, you know, he said he knew would say, this is, you know, I see what you've done here and this is not, uh, you know, <laughs> you have not produced a successful novel, but, but hopefully you learned something in the process. So, so he did that and he, and he continued to write and, and, um, you know, he always said he had, a uh, a uh, room full of, um, unpublished short stories and novels. And then um, finally, uh, he had a, a um, an epiphany at some point where he, he realized that he needed to write about about he, he was he felt that he was ashamed of who he was, and that's why he was his writing wasn't working. At some point, he he realized that who he was was what was going to make him a writer, and uh, and that was kind of a you know turning point for him, and. Um, uh, you know, mid to late sixties, he, he got that idea and he wrote this book called the gospel singer, which was really, you know, a semi autobiographical book about, you know, someone from, of his upbringing. Uh, and then that was kind of his breakthrough. Um, uh, that was definitely his breakthrough breakthrough book. And that was kind of how he reached that point. Sure. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, he grew up, in Bacon County, Georgia, very uh, poor um, uh, area, working class and rural, um, not many books in, in um, his home when he grew up. Um, in your conversations with him and in your research, I mean, were you ever able to figure out what, what drove his passion to become a writer? Um, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, there's stories from his that uh, um, he's always told about how um he oh you know he, he that his uh his people always told stories you know that was kind of you know they didn't have a lot of entertainment and storytelling was was their entertainment you know and they were all you know all of his uncles and 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 uh 
relatives were great storytellers and he, he grew up kind of, you know, sitting around on the farm and listening to these, you know, uh, o- older, uh, relatives tell these great tales. And, um, so that kind of was the, 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 you know, where he got the, the idea that storytelling was, you know, uh, something that he strove to do that was kind of in his bones. Um, he always said there was no books, you know, he, they, he, uh, there, his, um, parents didn't read and, and there were just no books available and that he, you know, the, the only book that was, the books that were around were the Bible and the Sears catalog. So he, he used to go through the Sears catalog and use that kind of as a writing prompt, you know, with his little friends, this is when he was really young, you know, and he would, he would, uh, you know, look at some of the ads and then they would, they would make up, uh, stories he would make up stories for his friends about uh, you know what was really going on with these these models in the Sears catalog um and then you know just kind of from doing the research you know he he um read a lot when he was in in high school he wasn't a good student he didn't even go that much you know and he was kind of you know his family was really poor so they they bumped around between Bacon County and 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 uh the slums of Jacksonville um, and then, uh, afterwards he went into the Marines and, and this was like a great thing for him when he realized that the Marine, you know, the base had books, had a library with books, you know, so he spent all his time reading there. And, uh, I don't know when, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's stories that he tells about how he, you know, went to, to, he just wanted to see a writer, uh, you know, a lot, you know, actually see one in person. So he, he knew of this writer in Jacksonville. This is, you know, when Harry was maybe, you know, late teenager, early twenties. And he went to the guy's house, you know, he looked up his address and he went to like a pay phone down the block and he called the guy up. I can't remember who the guy's name is. It's in the book, but you know, and, and the guy's wife said he was out to, it was, the guy was out getting a haircut. And, and young Harry Cruz said, well, this could be right. You know, a, a writer is just a normal guy who goes out and gets a haircut. You know, this <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make sense. And so he just got back in his car and left, you know, but, but, uh, so, but by that point, I guess he had already caught the bug and, and, uh, you know, so, so it seems like it, it started really early and, and it was, you know, a flame that, that did not go out through, through his entire life. I mean, you know, he had a crazy life with, uh, you know, drinking and, and, um, you know, uh, all sorts of escapades that, you know, uh, created the Harry Cruz character. But the one thing that never changed was that, you know, he, he felt that he was on earth to write novels, you know, and, and, uh, and whatever, whatever else there was, that was what he was going to do that, you know, when he got through whatever obstacle there was, he was going to be back at the typewriter trying to write another novel. You you just mentioned alcohol, and I know that he struggled with alcohol alcohol for many years. Did he ever conquer his drinking problem? Um, I, I think he conquered it in different ways at different times. You know, he he. I don't think he he. You know was ever completely, I mean, I think he had periods where he didn't have a drink for, for years, but then he would fall back into it. Um, he, he was able, he was able to, for, you know, at certain times control his alcoholism so that he could write or, uh, you know, for a period of time he could control it. Um, so that was probably until, you know, into his late fifties and his late fifties, he pretty much, I mean, the, the, the craziness, you know, the, the, um, getting drunk all the time and ending up in rehab and all that stuff that kind of went away. I don't think he completely kicked it. Mm-hmm. And then he had other issues, you know, later on, you know, with, uh, with, you know, prescription drugs and things like that. So, so he was, you know, he just had an addictive personality that sure. went across everything that he did, you know, wh- whatever his obsession was, he, you know, that would, he would overdo it. He is trying to think of what his quote was, but he said that there's, you know, anything that's not, that's worth doing is worth overdoing. So, so that, <laughs> that was, you know, his, his view. And, and I think alcohol fell in that, in that category. Sure. 
uh, well, um, despite his uh, drinking, as you've mentioned, he, he uh, was able to maintain a very strict writing schedule almost every day. Can, can you discuss his approach to writing and his self-discipline over the years? Yeah, that was another thing that uh, he credited to Graham Greene was this uh, idea that he had to reach 500 words a day. Um, and his, his, you know, and this was also goes way back. I mean, I guess it's, you know, from the same, probably the same era that he was taking apart that, that, uh, Graham Greene novel, he probably, you know, caught on to this, but he always said that if he could write 500 words a day, uh, every day, uh, you know, every, by the end of the year, he'd have a novel and, and he would, you know, his other thing was, you know, uh, get yourself in front of the typewriter, no matter what it is, he would say, you know, even if I sit there for three hours and don't do anything, eventually I'm going to have to write something. If I can't move and do anything else, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll think, you know, something will get on paper. So, um, so yeah, he would, I mean, when he was writing, you know, and, and, uh, really producing, that was his schedule. He'd get up, you know, ungodly early and, and write, uh, you know, for three or four hours until he got to that 500 words and, um, and then, you know, go about his business the rest of the day, do his teaching or whatever else he was going to do and then be back at it, uh, the next day. And, um, and then another thing was that he kind of part of his, eth- his, the ethic of his writing was the, the need to, or, or the, the, you had to have the strength to throw things away that didn't work. You know, he, and this is another thing from Lytle. Lytle would say that, that fire is the great refiner. So, you know, you had to burn, you had to be, you know, when, when something wasn't working as hard as it was, you just had to burn it and start over. So, so, uh, um, he kind of had that discipline as well. You know, he, once he knew something wasn't going right, he would start and start fresh. Sure. Well, you mentioned earlier that one of Cruz's best known books is a memoir, memoir he wrote a childhood. What led Cruz to write that memoir? Um, well, that was when, so he had, he had always written novels and that's always what he thought he was going to do. At some point he decided that, you know, uh, I'm writing about myself, but I'm writing it kind of through the veil of fiction. And, um, I want to write, uh, you know, I, I want to pull the veil back and, and just really, uh, you know, not hide anything. And, you know, as, as he, you know, one of his favorite sayings was, I'm, I, you got to get naked, you know, you got to get to the bone of, of the truth if you're going to be a writer. Um, and he wanted to, to do that, you know, without, um, putting it behind fiction. So he decided he was going to do that. He, 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 had several attempts at it actually before he came to a childhood. He first wrote a book that was never published. That was called take 38, which was actually first he named it half life. And this is, you know, he's 38 years old and uh, he was going to write this, you know, this memoir and it was kind of a, a combined memoir. And it was a book about, uh, about him um, when he decided to walk the Appalachian trail from, from Georgia all the way up to Maine. So it was, uh, you know, him, uh, getting out with nature and also telling the stories of his life. So that book this is one of these ones that didn't get there. And, uh, and then he started writing for Esquire. They gave him, uh, this is, you know, he, around the same time he got into journalism and, and, uh, he took this column called S called grits. For Esquire, when you know Esquire was really a popular popular magazine with great great writers, and and you know, um, they hired Harry to to write this column that would kind of take readers into you know the the southern point of view was what he was to write. But a lot of the writing he did there was uh, memoir, you know, about you think you know stories, these type of stories about uh, you know Bacon County and the, the depression and his his upbringing. So all of that kind of, you know, this is, you know, it took a few years and, and, you know, once he had all that material and really had done that, he, he took a sabbatical from, from teaching and he went back to Bacon County and spent, you know, a good portion of time interviewing all of his, 
you know, his relatives and their friends and, and, you know, trying to kind of to get, uh, behind all of these stories of, of, you know, what his, um, his parents and, and, you know, the, the community that he grew up in. And, um, and it really, you know, emotionally took a lot out of him. I mean, it was, uh, it was, um, probably the hardest book he ever wrote, um, on him. And, uh, he wrote it and it was, you know, universally hailed as a masterpiece. And, uh, and then he didn't, he didn't write another book for, uh, I think nine years after that. Um, it really just, just kind of, uh, he thought it was gonna, you know, that project would fill this hole in him that, you know, was, was, um, eating at him, you know, uh, the you know, questions about his, his youth and his childhood and why he, he, you know, carried these burdens. And then after it, it, he wrote it and he, and he it didn't seem to solve his emotional problems. It was, it was a, a, you know, kind of a letdown for him that, that led to kind of a period of inactivity. So you had access to Cruz's papers at the University of Georgia. Did you discover in your research any unpublished novels that you uh, kind of wish more people had the opportunity to read? There are unpublished novels um, in in his archives. Uh, they're the ones that are that are in that collection um, are uh, these ones that um, that he wrote before the Gospel Singer. So early on, you know, when he was in this this stage where he was teaching himself to be a writer. He would never wanted them would want them to see the light of day. I, sure. <laughs> I know that, um, but you know I'm sure it would be interesting to people to see. You know, to, I mean that's why he said he he made the, all of his papers available so people can go back and see what happened, see the process that he went through. So as a researcher, it's very interesting. Um, but I don't know that they would you know to like a general readership. But I think for fans of his. Um, yeah, if they were, if they were available or if like the, the University of Georgia digitized them so that, you know, people could log in and, and look at them, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how Harry would feel about that, but, uh, <laughs> but it would, for, for hardcore cruise fans that are like interested, you know, like, I, like me, you know, for me, it's great researching and seeing what he was writing, you know, uh, you know, when he was 26 or whatever and, you know, um, so there's that. And then there's other, you know, he, he was still writing towards the end of his life. And there's, there's a few novels that he wrote, you know, later on that aren't in that collection that, that are, you know, somewhere <laughs> that, uh, that there's some that I have never seen. I mean, there's, there's one that he was telling me about for, you know, all the, the last few years, you know, this is going to be my best book ever, you know, he would say. And, uh, and so, but which I've never seen, so I don't know where that one is. So there, there, it's possible that there could be um, Harry Cruz material from beyond the grave, but I, I, I'm not sure. And, and when did he die? Uh, he died in 2012. Gotcha. So, uh, so before writing Blood, Bone, and, and Marrow, what was your own writing journey? Well, um, I was uh, a newspaper writer uh, for years and years. Um, you know, uh, wrote at several different newspapers and, and, you know, all different topics. You know, I was a sports writer. I was an entertainment writer. I um, was an editor and, you know, wrote business and news. Um, and then, uh, around the time that I was, uh, that I first met Harry Cruz was the time that, uh, in, I was also, um, getting my graduate degree and my doctoral degree in journalism to go back and try to be a professor. Um, so, uh, around, around that time, you know, I, I, when I knew him, I was still writing for newspapers and then, um, so then as, as part of that degree, I started researching, um, another writer, a guy named Jim Murray, who was a, uh, legendary sports columnist for the LA times. Um, you know, one of the probably most well-known, uh, sports writers and one of the few that have ever won the Pulitzer prize. So I, re I researched him for, uh, for a dissertation to get while I was getting my degree. And then I later turned that into a biography. 
Um, so that was my first book was, it was a book called last King of the sports page about Jim Murray. And, um, and then from there, once, you know, when I finished that project was, was about when I got into the, to the research on, on the Harry Cruz book. So I've gone from, from, uh, one biography to another here in the last few years. Sure. Uh, do you have any other um, biographies planned right now? Um, no, I've, I'm, I, I mean, I really like the process of writing biographies and I, you know, I've, t- during that whole process, I've read a lot, you know, so of, of them and, and, you know, trying to kind of uh, develop the skills uh, of how to, to research and write them. And I really like the process. So I do think that I, that, uh, you know, I'll probably um, probably have a few more biographies in me, but I haven't um, haven't nailed down the next subject. And um, you know, it's, it's both of the ones I've had, you know, that I've written about. There's a lot to their life, you know. So it's, it seems like you have to have, you know, to to really create a full length book where there's you know a lot of um, you know reasons to keep reading and a lot of uh, you know. Uh, material to create a narrative with, you know, you need a certain person and both, both of the, the, the subjects I've written about, you know, they had, a, you know, varied stages to their life where a lot of different things occurred. So, you know, it, it, I'm looking for another um, good subject that kind of lends itself to that. And, you know, one that is going to hold my attention. And then I think that I can create a, a, you know, a story that would, that readers would enjoy. Sure. So outside of Harry Cruz, what books and authors have inspired your own writing? Um, well, uh, I guess what, when I was, um, when I was getting into, um, to writing biographies, uh, you know, that, that those writers have really helped me, you know, some different writers, biogra- biographers, um, uh, uh, guy who was influential in my life, who I, uh, you know, one of my uh, professors who's also a writer, a guy named William McKean has written a bunch of biographies that I really, uh, went over, you know, <laughs> very closely to kind of figure out the, how to write them. Another guy named, uh, Tracy Doherty is a, a great writer. You know, these are other people who write, uh, uh, who've written about writers, you know, um, there's a few others that um that I'm I'm blanking on right now uh that that I really looked at closely there um then there's great writers like David Halberstam and um Robert Caro and you know these are kind of the the um great nonfiction writers that you know um Laura Hillenbrand um uh and then you know I, Rick Bragg is a is a guy who um I've loved his writing um and then you know back when I was when I really started getting into to writing and you know were uh, a lot of um sports writers like uh Frank DeFord and um uh trying there's another name that that is uh, escaping me right now but uh but anyway that's kind of a sure. list of so, so there there's been a lot but Sure. Um, and I, you know, I continue to find great ones that, that inspire me. So if someone is interested in learning more about this biography of Harry Cruz, Blood, Bone and Marrow, um, where could they look online? Well, uh, there's, uh, you can go to, um, there's a website for the book, blood, bone and marrow dot com, um, that has uh, lots of information about the book. And, and, uh, you know, I can, I try to update that and write developments with it. And a lot of that material and other material about me and, and about the Jim Murray book is on at tedgeltner.com. So either of those sites, you know, uh, provide a lot of information and can, can also direct you to some other areas, especially on the blood, bone and marrow one. And maybe on the other one, they both have kind of links to other, uh, sites. There's, there's, there are, there, there's a great site, um, about Harry Cruz, uh, that, that lists, you know, all of his writing and all of his journalism, um, uh, and I can't remember the, the, the address to it, but it, but it's, it's pretty easy to find. And it's definitely linked from, from my websites. Great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Ted Geltner, author of Blood, Bone and Marrow, a biography of Harry Cruz. Ted, thanks for doing this interview. Hey, thanks a lot, Jeff. It was fun.